Well, good morning, guys. It's a Saturday morning, and I'm back in the shop. I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks. Got a new project here in the shop. This is a front end loader from a Kubota that a buddy of mine brought, and um, I don't know that I need to tell you how uh, the condition of it. You can see it's pretty bad. Uh, I've never actually seen one this bad. It's from a smaller Kubota, so it's not real thick steel. It's just uh, eighth inch steel. And so uh, we're going to look to replace this metal and probably do some reinforcement as well. There's a few issues that I'm seeing, uh, and I'll show you the back side of this here in a minute, but, and you'll be able to see the light coming through all this Swiss cheese. But this side here has been pushed back a little bit, so I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to resolve all that. Uh, my plan would be to make it um, better than new. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that, but I'm going to try. So and I am going to put, I think I'm going to put some some reinforced um, metal through there. So we'll see. Uh, kind of a work in progress. Uh, we're going to make up the rules a little bit as we go. And then I've got some flanges to fix that have been bent from when they've hooked on chains to it. I'll I'll, um, I'll weld a couple chain hooks on there and, and some different things. So stick around. It should be a fun project. I'm looking forward to it. Okay guys, just a little bit of cleanup here. So we're looking at the inside of the bucket obviously. My plan would be to cut out all of this steel. Basically you're looking at one flat plate here and one flat plate here. Very, very bad condition. I do want to salvage this cutting edge, cutting blade on the front. This is our cutting edge, and your plate is welded right to this. So you see the stitch welding, weld, space, weld, space, and it goes like that all the way down. I want to put my new steel on top of this, and I do want to try to save this because I don't have any right now. And I could get some, it wouldn't be that hard, but I'm trying to do this on a budget. I'm trying to do this for a, a buddy of mine as cheaply as I can, and so try to keep the cost down, labor cost as well as um, materials. And so I can save this, Let's see if I can get that piece of steel there to pull away from this. Now, when I cut this on the back side, I knew I would need to cut into that weld and so I did. And so it's gonna come apart from the back side pretty well. I could do the same on the front and cut those welds with the plasma cutter but I think to prevent any damage to that steel, I think I'm just going to take my cutting wheel and I think I'll cut through that pretty quick and easy. We'll measure this back piece. So remember there's a plate that goes here and a plate that goes here. So I'm measuring this back piece right now. It looks to me like it's gonna to need to be six or five and a half inches or there right at a quarter inch, which is twice the thickness of the, the steel that this is made of. Looks like I'm getting ready to have a thunderstorm, so we're gonna move this party indoors, I think, real soon.
So, I'm gonna end up putting these in here to kind of shore up and strengthen these areas. So I'm gonna just do some measurements and do that right now. And so what I'm gonna do now is I think I'm gonna weld this seam right here. And I may flip it over and weld that seam. And then I've got all these little kind of reinforcement bars that I'm gonna end up welding on both sides. I'm gonna try to have continuous welds on all this just to prevent some water infiltration and, and uh, make everything just a little bit stronger. So I'll do that now. Got all this backside welding done. Um, let me see if I can zoom you in on some of this. I did do continuous beads, but I did just some fast beads through here. Nothing special, nothing super. Um, I'm gonna start welding on this section here. This is the cutting edge of the blade. And so now we're gonna just run beads along there. And I need a continuous bead through here, obviously, because I don't want water infiltration or, or any kind of debris getting in here. So we'll do that now, and then we'll turn our attention to the inside here. Okay, guys, you can see here, still pretty hot. Um, just running a continuous bead, meeting up to where I stitch weld it. Just doing some some ease as I can and kind of go slow. Looking real nice. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So. Well, this piece of metal, and the reason is because about an inch and a half up from this surface here is pretty pretty interesting. So I'm going to weld in some steel here, and uh, you can I see, I'll put a gap in between. And that way we're tying into this quarter inch steel and this um, new steel that we've put in here. And, uh, and that way I think I've got good metal from here on up. I think I'll be okay there. It just gives me a little more uh, peace of mind about this. I do have a little bit of a bend right here. And uh, I had to bend that bar just a little bit right there. It's probably difficult to pick up on the camera, but it's because the bucket has got still just a little bit of um, uh, bend in it right here, or bow or twist um, from when they've hit something really hard. I've taken most of it out, probably 80% of it out, but there's still a little bit there. I'm gonna to have to remove this bracket here so that I can get my hook welded in.
Well guys, here's the finished product. I'm going to go ahead and sanded everything down. Wire wheeled quite a bit, obviously all my welds. I wire wheeled those just to get a lot of the crud off. And um, used a lot of acetone. And then I just sprayed it. Put a couple heavy coats on. You'll see some little bugs and stuff in my paint. Well, a little suicide pack for the sweat bees, I guess, because I got sweat bees all over the blasted thing. But they'll come out once it's dry, so I'm not going to sweat it. I put a hook here, and then I put a hook at the other end, and then I put the clevis on that in the, in the center. And I welded all of these um, to plate. It's really shiny, so it's kind of hard to pick that up very well, but anyways. And then on this, to get a little height, I actually used some fairly thick angle iron. And uh, you can kind of see how thick that is. And the reason for that was to get it above this right here. And then the, um, the rail here came out pretty decent. Not great, but decent. Anyways, that's it, folks. Hope you enjoyed the uh, the restoration of this. Look forward to the next one.